Alright, okay. Good evening, so we'll get started over here. Okay, um first thing first, um you know, wishing all Merry Christmas and of course um the New Year is coming as well. Okay, um so this is like officially the last webinar for the year of twenty two three and uh, we'll take a break next week and um, the usual usual session will then be continuing after that right after the new year itself so quick disclaimer for today's session okay um any opinions um information that I presented within today's session over here are based basically for educational purposes okay they are not uh, meant to be trade advisory or signals that directly you want to use to trade Okay, so just so be aware that um trading and investing involve risks. So make sure you're aware of the risks involved. Okay. So um quick ones about myself as well for those of you who are first time joining in. Welcome. Okay, um my name is Kayong. I've been trading in the market since 2012. Uh and since then, you know, I've been very active in the market, trading, investing as well as um, sharing my personal experience and lessons um with fellow traders. Uh, and since 2015, I've been doing this full time. Uh, and of course, today's session over here, uh, the primary objective is to share with you some of the market outlook at the same time to also provide you an opportunity uh, to ask questions, right? So if you have any questions relating to trading, um, you know, or any, any aspect about trading can be strategy, can be about market, uh, can be perhaps some of the challenges that you are personally facing. Feel free to just drop it into the chat box and then uh, we'll be taking a look at the questions and answer your questions as well. Okay, um, and before we end off today's session, uh, we also have a specific promo code for you guys who are joining in today. Okay, and um, the promo code will be only valid until end of this year, right? So you basically have a couple more days uh, that can utilize that promo code to double your deposit. Okay, I'll be talking a little bit more about that um, before we end off the session, okay, so if you want to get hold of the promo code, uh, make sure you stay all the way until the end of today's session. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's jump into the events over here, right? So very quick one, okay. Um, of course, this week is going to be relatively quiet in terms of the events um, in terms of economic data releases because we're basically at the end of the year right um, so end of the year you know Christmas building into the new year usually the market is gonna be quiet okay um, if you take a look like this week here you know um, yesterday today we're basically having a lot of major holidays and then going into the remaining part of the week there's not much that is important okay so in terms of like economic data releases I don't think that's much that you need to be overly concerned um, nothing really there and then if you just do a very quick look into next week um, next Tuesday we won't be having any session okay uh, but to start off the start of the year okay uh, next week we do have the FOMC um, sorry FOMC meeting minutes yes um, but I think more importantly is the NFP plus the Canadian data okay um, that will be important because the last FOMC, um, we're talking about potentially cutting rates next year, right? As early as maybe even in January. Uh, some are anticipating in March. Okay, so uh, the data that's coming in from the labor market aspect on the US is going to be crucial. Okay, so the very first NFP average hourly earnings uh, unemployment rate in the US for the new year is going to be crucial because that's going to give us a little bit more in information as to is the Fed really going to consider a cut um, as early as January or even you know March right and that would actually send the dollar weaker right so next week uh, do keep an eye on that right um, again you want to be always in touch with the market 
Okay, even though like um as I mentioned already last week's session, um we don't expect much from last week and this week, okay. But what you want to also do is just keep yourself in touch with the development of the markets so that when the new year comes, right, and when opportunities come, um you're always ready. Okay. So um that's the quick one in terms of the events side of things. Okay, now very very quickly, um let's take a look at the dollar over here. Okay. Now, from a technical point of view, uh, the dollar here may have potentially completed a move to the downside, okay, and uh, we're likely anticipating a pullback soon, okay. Now, obviously, the pullback isn't really much of a confirm yet, uh, but we are looking at it, you know, from the top over here, okay. Uh, a five-wave structure may have completed, okay, to the downside. Uh, and therefore, we're looking at potentially a simple three-wave pullback after which. Now, we do have from a Elliott Wave count perspective uh, in yellow, you can see one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and of course, within this move here, we are also currently testing the one, two, seven extension, okay, which is um, a key area where wave five would likely complete. Okay. Uh, so we are expecting a little bit of a pullback. Um, I don't think again the market's gonna move a lot for this week, okay. But um, this is something that you might want to look out for going into the new year, right? Next year itself, uh, maybe an opportunity to look for a short term buy on the dollar, with the expectation uh, or say a potential target where uh, it may pull back towards where wave four initially is uh, around one zero four point two five, okay. So right now, based on what we're seeing. Okay, um, the confirmation swing point uh, will be this area here, right? So the idea is we want to see an impulsive break above, okay, um, that area and then a kind of corrective pullback that will give you a confirmation that, okay, this will be ready to take um, the move higher uh, as a deep, deeper pullback, right? And that's where you can get a short-term buy trade opportunity uh, in terms of the dollar itself, okay? So keep an eye on that. Um, the other setup that you want to look up for is of course uh, if this develops into a crawl pattern okay so if this develops into a crawl pattern then of course um, you can find some confluences on the lower time frame you can look out for um, divergences right and you can look out for a breakout trade okay uh, to kind of execute that order to the upside okay so there are generally two um, setups and potential patterns that i'm looking out for in terms of the dollar to give us more sign and confirmation that it would potentially reverse and you know the upside will be something I'll be interested in in the short run. Okay. So if you bring uh if you look over in terms of the euro dollar, okay, um it's a little bit different in terms of the count on euro dollar versus the dollar index. Um the dollar index kind of gave us a pretty nice little five wave pattern. But the euro dollar as of now uh seems to be developing more of a bigger three wave move, right? So you can see over here in yeah uh, in green, okay. We're looking at the W move completed, which is basically this A B C, okay. And then we have this pullback here as a X wave in green, uh. And we're expecting you know this to develop in a bigger three wave move like that, right? To complete the yellow, uh, sorry, the green color Y wave, okay. So uh, Euro dollar is a little bit different because we don't we're not currently expecting kind of a five wave move, but more of a bigger three wave structure. Okay, but short term here, we may consider to take a sell uh, with a pullback towards the 50% Fibonacci. Okay. So the pattern and the structure right now we're seeing here is we have this move up. Okay, um, this, little, this little development seems to be very, very corrective in nature. So there's a high probability we can expect a pullback, right? Especially from this little crawl pattern. So if we're putting things together, then what we're looking at is this can be a WXY. Right, it's kind of an expanding flat. So short term, we can capitalize on that. Um, and when the market came, does come back towards the 50% area around 1.0870, this zone is where we can look for another buy trade to the upside, right? So we are looking at um, some nice little confluences on the lower time frame here as well. Okay, uh, let me just remove a little bit of this drawing. Um, so on the lower time frame, you can see, you know, we kept building into a pattern where it's obviously lacking in momentum, okay? So uh, we are looking at a potential breakdown towards the downside, right? And the area that I'm looking out for right now, I would say the price point that we're looking out for 
uh, it's somewhere around 1.099 T. Okay, uh, if you can get a nice little impulsive break below this level, okay, meaning impulsive with momentum breaking it, um, that will be pretty nice, right? That will be a pretty nice little trade where you can look out for a target around 50%, right? So again, uh, I don't think you're gonna get like, you know, the opportunity within this week because again, it's a very, very quiet week. Um, but you want to keep an eye on them because that's where opportunity can come in like next week, right? Um, and basically, we don't have a, I don't have a session with you guys next week, okay? So um, what I'm covering over here is something that you can also um, prepare for the next, for the new year, right? Um, prepare for the next week's trade itself, right? So that's on the euro dollars, how things. Um, then we have pound, right? So I see over here, uh, one of you is asking about the pound dollar. Um, pound dollar over here, we are looking at bullish opportunities. Right. Now the market seems to be developing uh in in terms of a channel structure right now. Okay, so after impulsive push to the upside and then we are seeing kind of like a pullback right now in, in channel structure, right? Which is basically a corrective move. So we have this three wave move here completed. Okay, um we have a nice little reaction, but it did not really break out of the trend line. So right now I'm expecting another three wave development, right? So this is one, two, three. Okay, it does a W, so we have an X wave here. I'm so kind of expecting another three wave, right? One, two, three to complete Y, and then that's where we're going to look for the buy trade opportunity. Okay, so if you're looking at this, then um, the area that I'm looking out for is around the 100% extension, which kind of confluence the bottom of the channel. So that area is around 1.2560. If you can get the market to just continue to develop like that, this would be the buy point for upside, right? And of course, uh, in terms of the idea over here, um, we do have this swing low. So as long as price remains above that swing low, then the probability to the upside seems pretty solid. Okay. So you have a, you have pretty much a very nice little risk reward trade, right? Because you're looking to buy around the 1.2560 and then your stop is just around 1.25. Um, your target, you know, you just look at the previous high, it can give you a 1 to 3 risk to reward, pretty decent. Okay, now of course, pound dollar has an opportunity to go even further, right? So you can see over here, uh, if this is going to be a longer term move, then uh, you can even look at all the way to the previous high around 1.3145, right? So the upside is pretty significant, okay? Um, do keep an eye on this. Again, I think this would be likely very much um, a trade next year, right? Next week itself, all right? So that's on the pound. Um, then we have the Aussie, which is pretty much similar to the Euro dollar pattern. Okay, we kind of have a little bit of a crawlish um, pattern structure right now. Okay, uh, market is currently also testing the top of the channel, right? So we are looking at potentially a pullback, right? I don't think it's going to be like a major reversal, right? But um, from this pattern structure here, if we can get a decent pullback, Okay, we can look to capitalize on this short term trade with a target around 6660, right? That's where your previous low is. Uh, if this can come down nicely, that will also be a confluence with the bottom of the trend line. All right. Um, so right now what I'm seeing over here is the swing low, right? Um, around 6780, right? So if you go down to the hourly, you can see um, that's the swing low that we're looking at, right? This little low point. Around 6780, right? So if you can get a breakdown um, below the 6780, that will be a pretty nice, decent trade. Okay, um, to the downside, right? So kind of looking at this structure over here as well. Okay, so uh, there are a couple of pretty decent opportunity going into the new year. Okay, um, just need to really, as I mentioned, you know, um, keep yourself... Um, aware of the development of the, of the markets, right? And when the opportunity really comes, when the new year comes, when liquidity comes back in, volume comes back in, um, that's where you want to be really prepared, right? To capitalize on some of these opportunities available. Okay. Um, then we have the dollar Canadian. Now dollar Canadian is still basically going lower. Um, but from wave point perspective, you know, you don't want to be selling at this area, right? You always want to wait for the pullback. Okay, so the idea of this is um, we're kind of expecting a decent pullback soon, um, especially with the, the you know with the kind of overextended move in the downside. Okay, so we're looking at 
potentially a five wave, right? And this is basically wave three only, right? So we're kind of seeing that in white, right? From this peak here in white, we have one, two, and then this may be wave three. Um, we're looking at potentially a wave four development. Okay, of course, if you're looking at longer term, then that's a downside. Um, but we are looking at more like, okay, if wave three is going to be completed, okay, um, can we take the buy trade as part of wave four uh, as a short term trade, uh, shorter term trade opportunity? Okay. But for now, uh, there's no sign of a pullback yet, right? So you want to basically be patient on this. Um, you know, we're not so keen in selling because if you're going to sell it you know, at the current price point, um, the risk reward is just not going to be worthwhile, right? Because if I bring you to the higher time frame, okay, um, you can see that we're basically coming into a territory where previously we do have that reaction there, right? We're kind of inside that right now, right? So you probably want to look for a potential bounce instead of like aggressively selling, right? That's that's my perspective of things, right? So dollar Canadian probably in the near term, there's really nothing much um, that we can really capitalize on, okay? But as I mentioned, you know, if you can get an impulsive break above this dotted line here, right? Um, 1.3295, um, then we may start to see the deeper pullback and then we may start to look for opportunity. But for now, okay, uh, I think you just want to be patient on that. Now, dollar yen, uh, overall, we are definitely bearish on that. Okay, um, going again on a hard time frame, I think there's a lot of downside opportunity we can look into. Okay, so definitely bearish. Um, and then if you look up for the H4 perspective, right? Um, what I'm seeing here is from this peak, uh, kind of have a tree wave completed in yellow, W. Um, a simple pullback, and then right now we're kind of expecting this to come back towards 140. 0.22, right? We kind of expect a little bit of reaction around there. Um, and then this will probably give us a deeper pullback and then another continuation to downside. Okay. So I think for dollar yen, um, any corrective setup over here would definitely be a sell opportunity. Okay, and then of course around that one one four zero point two two, um, we can expect a deeper pullback, right? Because then that will complete this one, two, three. It will give us a deeper pullback and then a continuation likely. Okay, so very, very straightforward in terms of the dollar yen. Okay, um, any corrective pullback definitely a sell trade opportunity. Okay. Um, go here. I'm a little bit neutral because we're kind of like in between two key areas, right? Um, one way I'm looking at go is that this can be a simple pullback, another pushback up to give us this correction for a down move. Okay. Um, alternatively, what can also develop over here is this can continue to develop and then this just push up, right? Um, so it's a little bit, um, I would say, I wouldn't say complex, right? But it's a little bit more of like, there are various scenarios that can potentially develop from where we are right now. So we may need to be a little bit patient and see how the market is going to develop first, right? Okay, so uh, if I kind of, you know, just take all this away, okay, back to the simplest pattern, right? Um, we have this move, right? And we have a pullback. So whether this pullback is completed or this pullback is simply just a first wave and, you know, we can get another push down before it upside. Um, that's what I'm mentioning, right? You need to just see how the market is going to develop first, right? Because right now over here, as I mentioned, there are a couple of ways to look at it. This can come down. Then this zone here is definitely going to be a buy trade opportunity, or um, this can come down correctively, okay, and uh, that may be the end of the correction, and this can be a start of a new move up. So, um, go I think we'll probably want to wait until like next year, the new year, to see how the market is going to develop, like what patterns comes out, um, before we kind of make a better decision as to do we focus on the sell side first, um, or then. Do we immediately start looking for the buy trade opportunity, right? So for gold, probably need to give it a bit more time, right? Um, crude oil is actually pushing a little bit higher as as we're speaking, okay. But um, again, I don't think you want to be overly concerned with the the shorter term move this week, right? Because again, liquidity is low; it's easier to move prices and things like that. Um, but I think we are generally bullish on crude oil. Okay, um, because if you take a look at the overall structure, um, we are likely we ha we have likely completed the five wave move in yellow, right? One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, and the market kind of gave us a nice little bounce. We kind of clear off this structure here as well. So that's a good possibility. We're going to see a at least a three wave pushback or even potentially a start of an upside, right? Because this can be completed. We may start to look for upside, right? So if you look out for opportunities right now, um, definitely you want to look for a buy side of things, okay? But always wait for the pullback, right? So I mean, this is still developing, so wait for the pullback, right? Wait for a three-wave correction. Um, then you look for the buy trade opportunity, okay? So as of now, probably just wait off a little bit, wait for the correction, okay? Um, S&P, we are bullish overall. I think going into next year, we're still bullish, okay? And um, this dotted line that you see over here is basically the previous high, okay? That was established back in 2022. Um, that's also the all-time high in terms of S&P. Um, there's a very good possibility we're going to break that next year. Okay. Um, so longer term opportunity, I think S&P upside, right? Um, it's a very good possibility we're going to break it. Um, but of course, once we break it, you need to be careful because that can also be a double top fish kind of reaction. Um, there's a good possibility the market is going to give us a little bit of a reaction there. Okay. Um, so if you have any buy trade to the upside, right, you may want to consider taking some profits around that all-time high. Uh, the market is likely going to react, right? So the question is more of like, how is it going to react? It's going to give us some clue. Right? Now, if the Fed is likely going to cut rates next year, I don't think the equities are going to drop, right? When the Fed cut rates, there's a good chance the equities are going to continue to go higher. Right? So that's the reason why I say, you know, overall, I think equities can make... Um, New high and um, we are overall bullish on the equities market in general. Okay, so that's on the S and P side of things. Um, pound yen, Aussie yen, I think not not much over there. Um, pound Australia is something you want to keep an eye on going into next week as well. Okay, um, what we are looking at here in terms of pound Aussie. Okay, uh, if I stretch out a little bit. Okay. Um, we have this move, right? So we have like a huge downside and then we have like a, a very long consolidated area and then we kind of break out of that structure, okay? So right now we're looking at, you know, if I zoom in a little bit, um, we're looking at the area where after the break to the downside, right? Um, we are looking at the W, X, and Y, right? And we are around, we are getting closer towards the key area around 1.86. So if this market continues to develop and uh, it kind of forms into kind of a crawlish pattern around this key area, um, again, we'll kind of expect a short-term bounce, right? So that short-term bounce can be an opportunity for us to take, you know, some kind of like a short-term trade to the outside um, for buy trade opportunity. Um, but again, I don't think it's, it's going to likely happen this week, okay? So um, wait for the price to tag that area, okay, um, 1.8560. If you can get, uh, sorry, 1.8600, if you can get a crawl, that will be a nice little opportunity to the upside. Um, and then from there, you can just basically target a 50% pullback, right? Okay, um, that one, you can keep a lookout for it next week. Okay? Um, Euro Canadian, we're, we're breaking to the downside. Um, so likely this correction may have completed. We were expecting a little bit of a deeper pullback, but you know, again, that correction may have been done. Um, so I would say overall we're still bearish. Okay, we're still bearish, and I think um, you know any pullback here again you can continue to look for a sell. Okay, so Euro Canadian we're looking at it from a perspective of a want as a A right B here. Uh, we're kind of expecting this to come down in terms of C wave. Okay, so Euro Canadian the direction is quite clear, right? We're definitely focused on the sell side of things. Um, I would say any kind of corrective pullback would naturally be a sell trade opportunity. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, BTC. Now BTC is gonna be interesting because next year April we can't have a halving, right? Uh, if you're not familiar with Bitcoin halving, um, you can simply do a Google search on it. But historically, when there's a halving event on Bitcoin, um, post halving the prices tends to go up, right? So going into next year, right? Next year, April is where the halving is going to happen. Okay. So I would say like from now until maybe April, if we get kind of like a pullback 
pay, potentially maybe back towards like, you know, $39,700, um, the $8,600 area. That would probably give us some decent area to look for a buy trade, right? At least for the long run. Okay, so we're kind of potentially built into also um, the halving event, right? Uh, so the previous halving actually took place um, four years ago, right? So if I bring you to a high time frame chart, okay, around 2020, um, that's where the previous halving took place, right? So you can see over here, uh, somewhere around April 2020, right here. Okay, so you can see again, um, post halving, that's what happened. Okay, and we're kind of expecting, you know, post um, next year, April is where the halving is going to be, somewhere here. So ideally, that would be also the move to the upside ring. Again, not 100%, but historically, that's what happened. Okay, so we're kind of expecting that to take place this, this coming year as well. Okay, so I would say, um, start putting a little bit, I would say start giving a little bit more attention to BTC next year, um, especially if you get closer towards April, right? Because that's exactly where the halving event is going to take place um, for BTC next year. All right. Yeah, so those are generally the things that um, you probably want to keep an eye on. Okay, um, let me very quickly take a look at some of the questions that you guys may have. Um, all right, so okay, Lam says, um, during market opening time, the spread for some particular pairs like Pound Kiwi is enormous, right? Um, yeah, okay. Um, I think it's... It's not just about the the market opening time, but it's really about liquidity, right? If there is less liquidity, the spread will be bigger. Um, and then especially if you're looking like New Zealand pairs, New Zealand pairs are less traded, right? The liquidity on Kiwi on New Zealand is lower than other pairs, right? And that's the reason why, you know, if you take a look like um, Pound New Zealand, naturally the spread is already wider. Um, and then if you couple it with market opening timing, right? That's where like liquidity is even lower, right? And that's where your spread can be pretty big. Right? So um, that's also the reason why, you know, um, last week and this week, probably you do not want to be too aggressive in, in executing trade because liquidity for this two weeks are going to be low, okay? Markets are having holidays and things like that. So um, you need to factor in a little bit, right? So my experience, you know, going into end of the year is always the market is going to be a little bit more choppy. The market is going to be a little bit low in liquidity. Um, I always like to take, you know, the last, you know, close to two weeks, um, a little bit slower in terms of trading. Um, and then as the new year begins, that's where you come back and, you know, be a little bit more active. Okay. So that's usually my routine. Okay. Uh, yeah. So pound dollar, we can talk a little, talk about that already. Um, Kiwi Frank, okay, um, Kiwi Frank, uh, that's the view that we have. I think overall, nothing much has changed. Um, it's very choppy, right? If you take a look like how the market has developed uh, since this is like what, November, right? Since November until now, you can see how the market has been developing very, very choppy, okay? Um, so this pair, to be honest, is not something that is very easy to trade, right? Because if the market is kind of up and down, up and down, up and down, um, it's, it's just difficult to be executing and managing trade, okay? Uh, so if you're interested in this, right, my primary take on it is this will likely come down. Okay, probably tag it something there. Um, basically, we are expecting the true wave move, right? We're expecting this true wave development, okay? So potentially towards the 100% fit area, right? Yeah, so that's where, um, you know, just now I think you saw, um, we're looking at, I don't trade this, right, just to be clear, right? But I think just now you saw, um, kind of have something like that there, right? Okay, so the idea is short-term downside, um, and then the potential target around 0 0.5330, okay? That would be completing this three wave move, and then we then expect an upside, right? So yeah, again on the on the mid term, you're looking at the downside and then upside. Um, if you're looking at shorter terms, then uh, you'll be looking at the sell trade opportunity, right? 
Yeah, but again, this pair again, as I mentioned, is not nice, right? Because you can see down, up, then down, and then very, very choppy, and now it's going up. So if you can, probably I would even suggest to avoid trading the Kiwi franc. Okay, um, probably you want to focus on other pairs instead. Yeah, so that's the one. Okay. Um Okay, so over here, um one of you mentioned dollar Canadian on the daily time frame looking for buys prices reaching key area. Yeah, I think I can't mention that as well, right? Okay. So yeah, but you you also want to be a little bit patient because the daily key area is pretty wide, right? Okay, um you kinda take it like from the recent low um towards this area you can see it's quite wide okay somewhere between um three one to around three two right so that's about 100 pips range right so you just want to be aware of that okay um Okay, um, okay, what is the set time period you trade or you monitor chart 24 hours? Um, no, okay, so the time zone I'm looking at trades, um, usually in the morning, okay, so, uh, this, you can see my, my time zone here, right, um, it's basically set to plus 8, okay, um, that's where I'm in, right, like, Singapore, Malaysia time, Hong Kong, right, basically around that time zone. So I usually, um, so of course, depending on the time zone as well, right? So for me, um, usually I take a look at the markets, uh, do a lot of prep work in the morning, right? So in the morning, it's basically the Asian session um, before the London market kicks in, okay? Um, and then um, most of the time, I put in my trades before the London, okay? And then at night in the US session, uh, I basically just, come back and monitor, right? Uh, kind of do some updates in terms of markets and things like that. So those are the time period, right? Um, of course, you need to also figure out like what time fits you, okay? Because some people are asleep during the Asian session. Some people are more active during the London session and things like that, right? Uh, so you need to adjust, uh, I would say, fit your trading into the lifestyle that you have, okay? Not the other way around, okay? Um... Okay, euro dollar. I think we covered that already. Um, euro franc. Okay, euro franc. You probably want to be focusing on the upside. Okay, so I think overall this still remains intact. Okay, now why upside is because again, um, bring you to the daily. You can see where we are right now, right? Okay, so the market is kind of testing this zone, right? Until this zone gets broken. Okay. Um, you want to look for potentially outside, right? Because you can't expect that bounce unless the market break through it impulsively. Okay, um, then that changes the overall direction. But for now, we, we haven't get a break and close below, right? We're kind of testing it a couple of times here. Um, you know, kind of a little bit of a double bottomish structure here as well. So I think overall direction for Euro franc, you want to be looking for potential buy. Okay, you want to look for potential buy trade opportunity to the upside, right? So I think overall direction is quite clear on the, on the euro front. Okay, you can also see this as a double bottom here, right? Okay, um, which is best to trade from now to January? Uh, I think for the last, I mean, we only have a couple of days left until the new year, right? So you probably just want to be patient. Okay, I would say uh, keep update keep yourself updated to the development of the market um but for me the actual kind of like execution of trades would likely be only like next week right when the new year takes it okay um euro and okay right that's norwegian chrono okay um good i think this one here will probably look for buy trade setups as well right kind of in that zone okay and um, we're kind of seeing a little bit of a lack of momentum right we we'll call this a crawl pattern 
Okay, so I think overall you probably want to be focusing on a reversal, right? Yeah, and um, probably this is also completing a three wave move that is probably completing soon. Yeah, I mean this area here is definitely something you want to be aware of, right? Okay, it's a very wide zone. Uh, but kind of streamline it's basically around there, right? We're kind of seeing this little development here, so we're kind of expecting the upside. So, if you want to wait for a bit of confirmation, you probably want to wait for the breakout. Okay, break above um the price point right now is around eleven point three one, uh, which is basically the swing high here, right? So if you are looking for a break to the upside, then the target, you know, if you use a simple, um. Previous support term resistance area. That's the good. That's going to be the price point. Uh, if you look at Fib, okay, um, six one eight is somewhere around there as well, right? So kind of get a bit of confluence, right? So that's on the Euro Norwegian Chrono. Okay. Um, how to be a full time trader in Malaysia regarding income tax? Um, yeah, I mean one way is uh, of course you know I'm not a professional tax advisory. Um, you obviously would want to also consult a tax accountant to really get the actual answer for case-to-case -case basis, right? Because everyone's probably different. Um, but the whole idea here is you can declare as a income source, right? Of course, if you declare it as an income source, um, then you probably need to then um, again consult the tax consultant how you're going to be able to file for taxes, right? Um. So there are many ways, right? I mean, um, if today you have, you know, for example, uh, overseas banks account as well, okay, then you might also declare, you know, um, income from overseas, right? So there are many different ways of going around with it, um, depending on, again, individual case-to-case -case basis, right? So obviously you want to, um, again, you know, um, just reach out to a tax consultant, right? Um, and then you can find out a bit more like in your personal case, um, in your contacts, right? What's the method to do it? Okay. Um, what is the best leverage to use? Uh, in terms of leverage, I would say it doesn't really matter if your capital is a little bit bigger. But of course, if your capital is small, then leverage becomes more significant, right? So for me, uh, I'm using a leverage, you know, I mean, I have accounts that have a leverage of 100, I have accounts that has leverage of 500, but it doesn't really matter to me because um, you don't max out your leverage anyway as you're trading, right? But unless you are saying that, okay, I put in a $50 account, right? So if you're putting in a $50 deficit into your account, uh, the leverage is important, right? Because if today with a $50, you only have 100 leverage, um, you can't open a lot of trades, right? And you need to also factor in your margin requirement and things like that. So the smaller your capital is, um, the more significant the leverage is, right? In order for you to have that flexibility in, in executing and managing trades. Okay. So I would say there's no best, right? But again, um, understand the, the mechanics, right? Behind leverage, margin requirement, risk management, um, once you understand those aspects, okay, then you'll be able to you know, better fit, like, you know, what's the what's the best leverage for yourself, right? If you're using a small account, if you're using a sizable account, then that's not so significant. Okay. Um, right, uh, so over here, um, about crypto this year, I think even BTC is going nowhere. Um, Actually, this year, crypto, I mean, if you're specifically talking about BTC, yeah, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but the crypto market has been pretty active in, a, in the last quarter, right? Since October, November this month. Um, the crypto market has been quite active, right? I mean, let me just bring you over to um, some example like Solano. Okay. I mean, you can take a look at this chart here, right? Um, Bitcoin is quiet, but some of the other coins are pretty active. Right, I mean, like this. I mean, if you, to where we are today, that's a forty percent rally. It's huge, right? Um, and then the other one is um, AVAX, right? Okay, so again, um, you can see from you know, like 
this is December line, start of December to where we are here is, is about 77%, right? So, um, I mean, it's the same as some asset classes, right? Uh, sometimes certain asset will not move, then the other will move, right? It's, it's the same as in FX, right? Some currency pair moves a lot, some don't. Um, yeah, it's something that is quite general in all markets, right? Even in the stock market, some stocks move a lot, some stocks doesn't. Okay, so you may want to uh, also expand a little bit in in terms of the assets that you're looking into, right? So if you're looking at FX, it's always good to have like multiple currencies in your watch list. Uh, if you're looking at a crypto market, it's also always good to have multiple cryptos in the crypto watch list. Um, so in that case, right, in the event where one is really not moving, you still have opportunities to monitor the others. Okay. So yeah, I, I know about this too because um, these two cryptos are the one that I traded, right? Solano and AVAX, um, which for the past quarter, so from October, November to this month in December, um, this two in particular has rallied quite a bit. Okay. Um, can I consider H1 as my key level and execute in 15 minutes? Um, definitely, right? Okay, I think uh, time frame here, as long as it fits into your style, uh, it works, okay? So if you're looking at H1 as a higher time frame than M15 as an execution time frame, that's perfectly fine, okay? That's something you can do as well, but do take note 15 minutes means you're more of an intraday, right? So those trades are likely going to be like within the day, you know, you get in and then you get out by the end of it. Okay. Uh, about time zone, why London session is always date nowadays. Um, no, I think it's more like the season of the year, right? I mean, if you're looking at last one month, right? I mean, we're getting towards the end of the year, right? That's a very natural process. Um, and of course, you also need to factor in um, the certain period in the, in the, in, I mean, depending on where you are, right? So if you're in like, if you're factoring in in the UK, in London, um, then you also need to factor in like the summer period, um, the winter period, right? Because they do have like summer break, okay? And uh, there's a certain period during that session, in that, that season in summer, um, they go off holiday, right? It's just like end of the year, Christmas and New Year to them is like a big thing, okay? Um, so you want to also factor all this thing, right? So if you're looking at like this last month, it's quite common, okay, for the market to be just quiet, okay. But typically, uh, in the FX world, then London, UK market is usually the most active ones. Okay. Um, what's a good way to identify confirmation for entry and how to make good entry? Um, so if I were to show you an example maybe on the euro uh, sorry on the aussie dollar over here right okay so we have a clear direction that i'm interested in which is the downside right so i also identify you know on the h4 over here you can see um the price point that i'm interested in right which is around six seven eight five okay so what i can do is i can always go down to lower time frame um to start look for a little bit more of a confirmation right okay so what kind of confirmation I can also look for is you, know, you can look at patterns, you can look at um, indicator base, you know, there are many ways. But for me, I like to keep things simple. So over here on the H4, I already have a pattern, I have a sense of direction. Uh, and then on the H1, we're looking at, okay, potentially this can be like some kind of topish formation and that would act as a nice little neckline, okay? So if you're familiar with kind of double top pattern, right? So what you have is this is kind of neckline and you're waiting for the neckline to be broken. Okay, so what you can do on, you know, in terms of like example on this trade here is potentially set a sell stop with a stop just slightly above that high. Then of course the target you can, you know, depending on how you can set it, right? So for me, um, I use a lot of breakout techniques, right? So I play around with the H4 as well as the H1, right? So sometimes H4 can be super clear, right? In this case here, you know, H4, the pattern itself is already very clear, okay? Uh, but example, like in terms of like Euro, okay, the H4 may not be the clearest right now. So you can go down to the hourly, right? So you can see hourly, maybe, you know, you want to wait a little bit while to give it a double topish kind of structure. So give you that neckline, okay? Or on the hourly, you know, you want to wait for this to maybe develop further to give you that kind of like rising wedge or we call a crawl. 
Okay, so sometimes the H4 is not the clearest. So I play around with multiple time frames, right? To give me that clarity. Right? So giving you an example on, on Aussie dollar is actually one of the clearest one right now. Okay. Um yeah, so the confirmation that you may be looking out for can come from multi time frame perspective, right? And Going from multiple time frame perspective, you can also add confluences, right? Confluences like, you know, are we at a key area? Do we have some indicators to support it? You know, do you have the fundamentals uh, to support it, right? So you find factors to complement your trade idea, right? The more factors that align with your trade idea, um, the higher the probability is likely going to be. Okay, so that's something you can look up for. Okay. What's my view on the yen pair? I think overall the yen pair would likely be downside next year, right? Which means that um, there's a very good chance the yen would strengthen next year, right? For whatever reason it is, I probably don't know it yet. Um, but I think that will be a major shift from Bank of Japan, okay? Um, and it's going to be very, very tricky for them because this year, um, a lot of banks has already increased interest rate, right? But for Bank of Japan, they have maintained a negative interest rate environment where every bank has increased rates, right? Um, it's tricky because next year, the major banks are going to start talking about cutting rates, right? Whereas, you know, the Bank of Japan has not done anything yet. So next year, this, this is going to be something that you probably want to also be keeping a very close watch of what the Bank of Japan is like going to do. Right, um, there's a good possibility they're gonna pivot away from their current policy, and if that's gonna happen, you know, it's gonna create a lot of uncertainty and things like that. Um, and I strongly believe that the yen may strengthen quite a bit. Okay, I mean, we're already seeing signs of it, right? The dollar yen has been coming down quite a bit. Um, but of course, not all pairs, right? The pound yen here is currently ranging a little bit. It did came down a bit. Then after that, start ranging. The Aussie yen, you know, is still ranging. You know, in a a rather huge range, okay. Uh, but I think overall direction on the yen is very much downside next year. Okay, which means um yen would strengthen and therefore the yen pairs would likely see downside. Okay. Um Kiwi dollar. Mm, yeah, Kiwi dollar downside as well. I think pretty similar to the Aussie. Okay, uh, I don't really trade the Kiwi, I trade the Aussie itself. So, um, pretty much the same as Aussie, right, in terms of the pattern itself. Okay, so yeah, I think Aussie, Kiwi, quite similar. Okay, so you want to focus on maybe one, right, instead of both of them, because they are very, very closely correlated. Okay. Um... Recap on the pound dollar. Um, so pound dollar, this is what I'm looking at right now. Okay, um, I'm expecting a, another push back to this, this area around two five sixty. Where right? so if you can get that, then uh, that would be a nice little buy trade. Okay, this is a pound dollar. Cool. Okay. Um. Good. So yeah. So you guys are really engaging. That's great. Okay. Uh. Now let me. Very quickly bring you to the promo code. Okay, um for those of you just I mentioned right at the start, um we have this promo code over here. Okay, so uh this is the promo code, but just be aware that this is gonna be valid until the end of this year only. Okay. Uh so you have a couple of more days to actually kind of utilize this promo code. Okay, um so how you're gonna use it, right? Is uh number one, you need to uh, log in to your account. Okay, so you can actually log in via the website, okay, uh, under Octar, or you can do it via the trading app um, from Octar as well, right? Basically, you open the app, log into your website, then go over to the profile section, right? So when you go over to your profile section, uh, that is this option called the promo code section, okay? Uh, click into it and then key in this promo code that you see over here. Once you key in, you need to click activate. Um, once you activate means this is active, right? And the next time you actually put in a deposit, you'll be able to double that deposit, right? So if you put in a $50 deposit, then activating this code here would allow you to enjoy an additional $50, right? So you put 50, you get another 50. 
uh, in total, you have a hundred dollars that you can use to trade. Okay, uh, so again, this is going to be only valid until the end of this year. So you have a couple of more days to kind of activate it and use it. Um, next year probably will have a slightly different codes, right? Depending on Octar. Okay, uh, but for the remaining few days here, um, this can still be used, right? So if you're interested in it, um, take a snapshot of this code. Uh, after the session has concluded, you can go over to your account and activate it immediately as well. All right, so that's all for me for today. Um, again, the market is relatively slower in you know this week, so be a little bit patient. Uh, but at the same time, as I mentioned. Um, do keep yourself updated in the development of market so that when the opportunity comes, you're always ready to take action. Okay. Next week, um, I won't be having a live session. Okay. Um, the next session we're gonna have is um the following week, right? So um, from here, um, wishing you guys or um Merry Christmas, right? Yesterday, <laughs> um, as well as Happy New Year going into two o two four. Okay, and of course, all the best for the New Year as well. Um, as we kickstart um, it, you know, in the following week. Okay, so that's all for me. All the best. And um, for those of you who are enjoying your holidays, happy holidays. And I'll see you guys in the next live session in 2.04.